Yeah, so a very good morning and a warm welcome to you all for the first session of SciTech Spins, a series of weekend seminars and lab demos for high school students. Today's session is on design thinking for creativity and innovation. Design thinking is very relevant in today's times and can be a powerful tool for solving the wicked problems that the world faces. It can be useful for you no matter which discipline you come from. To introduce design thinking to you, I'm very delighted to have Professor PVM Rao with us. Uh, professor PVM Rao is a professor of mechanical engineering and design at IIT Delhi. He's also the present head of the Department of Design. He teaches courses on product design, innovation, and manufacturing. He and his team build medical technology products as well as assistive technology products. So without further ado, I would now pass it on to him. Over to you, Professor PVM Rao. Thank you. Okay, hey, uh, good morning and uh, I welcome all the uh, students, maybe teachers and others for uh, the session on design thinking. Let me first share my slides. Okay, so good morning once again. So today we are going to have uh, uh, a session on design thinking. Uh, as it was introduced, design thinking is uh, an extremely powerful tool, uh, is being used by for any problem solving and for almost all types of people, whether it's in science or engineering, humanities, social sciences, commerce, economics, uh, architecture, to you name any area, and you will find that uh, design thinking is uh, being used extensively for uh, multiple areas. And it's also a very simple technique to start. And uh, one can go into various depths of this. So what we'll do today is basically have a kind of an introduction to this particular technique, which you can use uh, not only when you are in school, but also when you actually go for your graduation, higher studies, and when you are even employed uh, or whatever may be the area of uh, work which you have, you will find that this is uh, a, a very powerful tool, which you will realize, will make you realize by the end of uh, this particular session. Okay, so uh, in order to conduct this particular session, uh, I also have uh, two of my colleagues, okay, Kanika Jolly and Anchal Sharma. So both of them are research scholars. Uh, both of them are actually doing uh, their PhDs. So PhD also happens to be the highest degree, uh, which uh, most of the educational institutes and universities offer. Uh, so usually people after schooling go to graduation, then they do their post graduation, which is masters, and then they come for PhD. So both of them are presently pursuing their PhD in the Department of Design. Let me introduce a little more about them. So uh, Kanika, as you see here, uh, is basically uh, her area of work is more related to transportation, motorcycle, and uh, uh, basically vehicle design and related accessories. Uh, she had her uh, bachelor's, bachelor's from National Institute of Fashion Technology, which is one of the very premier institutes. And then she actually did her master of design from IIT Bombay, uh, which is one of the, again, best schools for uh, design. And uh, very interestingly, she is the first women Master of Design in Transportation Design. Transportation Design is one area in design, and she happens to be the first woman to do this Master of Design. And uh, motorcycles are her passion. Her PhD is also to develop uh, a protective clothing for motorcyclists, 
uh, taking care of not only the protection, but also comfort and aesthetics, which is uh, her area. And uh, Anchal uh, has a passion basically in the area of education. She did her uh, Bachelor of Architecture and then followed by Master of Design again from School of Planning and Architecture, where she had her Master of Design. And then she actually came to do PhD. As I mentioned, her area of research is uh, education. Uh, and uh, what she is actually now doing for her research is two things. One is uh, how do you actually make pictures or the books with pictures or pictorial content accessible to people who are visually blind? I think all of you have study your books of state government and NCRT, and you may have seen books with pictures. Sometimes you may be wondering how are these books and how are these pictures actually uh, read or accessible by the blind? So IIT Delhi is developing a technology and Anchal is one of the persons who is a part of this team. She also has an interest to teach geometry to the uh, students who are visually blind. So, uh, so I'm joined by these two. If you look at the profile of uh, both Kanika and Jolly, they're not engineers. Uh, many times uh, outside world thinks that IITs only have engineering degrees and not others, but that is not true. We do have non-engineering courses, programs at bachelor's, master's and PhDs. So let me share one such uh, program which we are going to start uh, next year, which may be of interest to uh, some of you, is called Bachelor of Design. So IITs generally run what is called as Bachelor of Technology, but we are also now starting Bachelor of Design from the next year, that is 2022. A good thing about Bachelor of Design is that students from all areas are welcome. Whether you are a school student uh, pursuing, let's say, science or arts, commerce or any area, everybody is welcome to this particular program. And it is open to everybody, uh, uh, including maths, physics and chemistry uh, students. So now the admission to this is not through JE, since this is a, a very different type of a course. So we have an examination which is called UCED, which is Undergraduate Common Entrance Examination for Design, which is actually conducted by IIT Bombay. And uh, in case if you are able to secure a good rank, then uh, you can come to IIT Delhi for uh, Bachelor of Design program. Good thing is preparation for such exams start uh, now, uh, not only the actual preparation, but also the application process. Now the application for UCED is already on. Uh, in case if you go to Google and search UCED 2022, you will end up uh, with this, where the applications are already open and probably they may be on for some time uh, for you to apply. In case people wants to look at other things other than engineering, Bachelor of Design, uh, at IITs is also one of the good options and uh, uh, you're all welcome to apply for this particular program. But uh, coming to today's subject, today's subject is uh, design thinking, as we said, and uh, we also said that it has been applied to almost every area of work and every to solve any major problem. And uh, hence, uh, let's look at this. Now, what I'll do is, uh, uh, the way we are going to conduct today's session is that it, it is going to be a fairly interactive. Interactive in the sense, there will be a lot of questions. These are the questions which anybody can answer. And I think everybody will have an answer. These are the questions where people can. So you can put your question, answers for the questions which I am going to pose in the chat window. And uh, one of us will actually Pick because we won't be able to take all the answers. We'll randomly take a few and probably 
discuss about that. And uh, so it's going to be the entire session. What we'll do is we'll make you do rather than just make you listen. So sometimes listening is a very boring activity, but I think doing is a very interesting activity. So uh, this particular session is planned such that all of you, wherever you are, whoever is attending this session, if you just have your paper and pencil, uh, that is enough uh, for you to participate in this. And even that may not be required uh, if, uh, if you don't have one. So let's get started with uh, today's session. And uh, what I'll do is let me start with uh, a small situation and give you a situation and ask you, how do you decide or how do you make a decision in this particular situation? So what is the situation? What is the question? So imagine that there is a, a family joins you as new neighbors, uh, wherever you are staying. Uh, let's say some new neighbors come and join and uh, they join about a month ago. So they are relatively new. And uh, your, your family had some limited interaction with this family during this one month. And uh, this family invites your family next week uh, for, let's say, a get together. And uh, the occasion for this invitation is that one of their family members, she is celebrating her birthday. Okay, so you, your family has an invitation for a a birthday get together from your neighboring family. And uh, suppose if you have been given the responsibility to decide an ideal gift for this particular occasion, you need to choose a gift, what would that be? So can you put your answers in the chat window? So I, I am also reading uh, Bhagavad Gita, room decor, drone, a wristwatch, uh, a good book, flowers, sweet and a bouquet, uh, maybe a family dinner. Sofa set. Okay. So I think I think uh, we have had uh, uh, enough uh, inputs about. Uh, from all of you, uh, what would be the gift which you are actually planning to do? Now, here lies a, a slight problem. The problem is, uh, it's good to decide a gift in this manner. I think we all do, I do, and many of my colleagues do, and probably most of us do, but there is a better way to do, okay? So the better approach, that is what the design thinking actually teaches us. And uh, in this context, so this is a, assume that this is a, a decision making, this is a problem which I had to solve either individually or as a, a family. Now, uh, should I jump on to the solution immediately or should I spend some time thinking about, let's say, uh, what is this decision to be made and what is the problem which I'm going to solve. So in this context, uh, a quote from Einstein is very, very relevant. So once when Albert Einstein was asked, he said, if I have one hour to solve a problem, I'll spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and only spend five minutes in coming up with a solution. Now, there is a great message in this particular. It says, have I spent enough time on the problem or on the decision which I have to make before I even start thinking about my solution? And I think design thinking says, please do, please do spend uh, some time. And depending on the complexity of a problem, you may have to spend maybe a few minutes to few hours 
to few days, weeks, months. It could even be a year. Okay. Uh, I'll just give an example. In one of the United Nations problems related to healthcare, where they had to solve a problem, they said, let's spend one month studying the problem. Don't let's not go to the solutions. So uh, that's a design thinking approach. Design thinking approach. The first step is that think about the problem and uh, probably your decision will be much better if you are able to spend time and we'll demonstrate that uh, as we go. So one of the things which is probably I know that I'll be able to come up with a better gift. If I know who is this neighbor, what is her personality? What are her, her interests? What are her hobbies? What does she do? What are her activities of daily living? Okay. Now, if, if I know, if I have this data, and if I have a little bit of this information or research in this direction, I know that I can probably come up with a better gift. So the gifts which you came up can be in millions, which is, uh, so these gifts can be uh, in the form of millions, but if I do a research, probably I can be, I can probably think of a smaller subset of gifts, which are more relevant to this particular person. Now, uh, how to know about this particular neighbor? You may already probably be knowing about this person uh, a little bit, but you can also do more. For example, these are some of the methods in this particular case, which can be used. Observation, since this neighbor is here for a month, you and your family members have been observing, observing her for uh, uh, some time. So you have probably learned about something about uh, her or through observations, or you, you and your family may have had a little interaction which gave you an opportunity to know her, could be another one, or you may have had an input from others. For example, you may have talked to their sons and daughters, and uh, they gave certain inputs about this particular person whom you are actually trying to decide a gift, or there may be enough information on uh, internet or social media uh, about this particular person. Maybe this person has uh, a Facebook page, a Twitter, uh, or uh, LinkedIn, or any of these things. Probably I can get a little bit more information about this particular person. And it is also possible to initiate a dialogue with the person. Now, when I say initiating a dialogue with the person, it is not to go and ask, what is the gift you would like to have? It's basically using an opportunity to know more about her. Uh, since you still have a week's time to decide, I would like to probably find an occasion if there is an opportunity to talk to her, which will give me a little bit more information about her, uh, could be a one good way. So there can be a number of ways to understand the person for whom you are actually make this, making a decision. So if I know this particular person, in fact, in commercial terminology, we call it as a user or a customer. We'll come to that later. But uh, if I know this particular person, then probably I'll be in a, a better position to do it. Now, when we ask somebody, why don't you follow these methods and uh, know a little bit about and collect all the information uh, about this particular person and maybe uh, document it, then uh, one of the persons actually came up with this information about the person who is your neighbor for whom you are actually trying to decide a gift and a birthday. So first is she is in her 40s and lives with spouse, two children, 11 year and 14 years and father-in-law. That is the first information they could gather. She works in a bank and she's an avid coffee drinker and seen drinking coffee while browsing and probably talking to others. This was also found through observations and from others. She's, a, she's particular about cleanliness. She's emotional and soft-spoken. She's an environment-friendly person. 
and she spends her leisure time watching movies, listening to music, and taking care of a pet. She is very fond of taking selfies, and she is fond of dark colors. I am sure the methods which I actually told uh, are sources of information can get you uh, these type of a thing. Suppose if your neighbor, if this person is a neighbor for three years, you can probably know much more than this one page of information which you have. You can probably write five pages or six pages. Then you don't have to decide much because you already know the person. But I think since this person is relatively new, I would basically like to know a little bit more. And this is one page of information which you could do. Now, if I say you have some information about this person, I'll again pose the same question. What is the gift you are going to give? So selfie stick, laptop. Okay, what are the other options? Flower pot, coffee mug, good. Theater set. A beautiful dark chocolate, smartphone, phone, coffee mug. A radio. A plant, a coffee uh, book. Okay, so did you see that the choice of your decisions have changed drastically when I put the question first and when I actually put the question now? So the design thinking, the first step, it says that for whomever you are actually trying to solve a problem or design a product, or make a decision, know about that particular person, spend that time. In many cases, this may not be a one person. Imagine a smartphone company wants to launch a new smartphone. They would like to probably know from hundreds and thousands of users, what is that they would like to have in the smartphone? Okay. Or a coffee shop would like to probably launch a new coffee mug. So they would like to do a similar research, but that may not be as simple as this, which is shown. They may take a few months or a few weeks and collect information from many people, interview them, collect a lot of data, and then actually probably see what is the kind of a mug or a smartphone uh, they would like to launch. So collecting this particular information and knowing the user and customer is generally called as an empathize. So empathize is the first step in uh, design thinking. So first thing which I do when whenever I have a problem is I empathize. It may be a one person as this is, or it may be a large set of people. Suppose if, if I want my cell phone to be sold to, let's say, a million people, I can't interview a million. I may probably interview a typical 50 or 100 or 30 or 150 or maybe 300 or a thousand, uh, but I'm not, I, I don't, Malav, you can't do, you can't reach out to a, every person who is a potential user of your smartphone. So there is a process to select who are those 30, 50, 100, 150, whom I should probably uh, interview or collect the information could be a, a, a very important step. And we'll come to that a little later. But for this problem, I suddenly saw that Many of you had a very interesting new choices for the gifts the moment you had more information about this particular person. Now, one more thing which happens is when you collect a data, you get a data from multiple sources and multiple people. Okay. And what you see is that when I analyze the information which is collected, I see there are certain patterns. I see there are certain clusters. And uh, it's maybe very important to know, and I think this is reinforcing what is then. So uh, the information which is generally collected is also, uh, when we say collecting information, it's not just about uh, reading about the person, or even when you are interviewing a person or talking to the person, you are actually doing multiple things. You are looking at what this person says, 
you look at what this person how this person thinks and what she does and what she feels so observation of a person or a interaction with a person not only gives you information about what the person says you actually directly or indirectly you also get a lot of information about other aspects and each one of them is very very important in the decision making so usually when we do it as a team a problem solving uh, so what happens is ki uh, most of the many people would give information and whatever information they give we actually put it as a some kind of sticky notes uh, these are the things which have come from various and everybody writes on this sticky note what is that they observed about this particular person and you get a lot of data same thing happens when you interview a person for either a new cell phone release or let's say a new coffee mug release when you are interviewing you are not only just looking at the words but you are also looking at the body language and what the person is actually carrying what the person is wearing they are all become a very very important data uh, when you sit for and this type of uh, process is usually called as empathy map which is a, an important so what i'll do is at this stage i'll just switch uh, i'll ask anchal to come and probably tell a uh, little bit more about empathy mapping so good thing is there are very interesting tools some of them freely available on the net where organization of such information or such research about the person can be done digitally and collaboratively suppose four of your friends want to probably solve a problem you may be sitting thousands of miles away you can still collaborate and still do this empathy mapping on the same board if you are physically there you will probably use a white board or a black board a write down or stick these notes on white board but if you are let's say uh, online and if you are not physically meeting you can also do uh, such analysis of the data etc uh, through online i'll probably what i'll do is i'll stop sharing and uh, ask uh, anchal to share her screen and give a small demo about how to use such tools thank you professor rao uh, i'll share my screen now so i'm hoping that my screen is visible to everyone yes 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 go ahead yeah. okay so uh, first of all hi everyone to all the students and as professor rao has mentioned about empathy map i am just showing you a small uh, demo on one such collaborative tool there are several collaborative tools but the one i am showing you is miro right now so it is basically a very nice software to visualize all the concepts so for example uh, professor rao gave an example of a neighbor who has recently shifted so just for an example the neighbor's name is dara and as professor rao mentioned that she is staying with her two children and one grand uh, a spouse and grand parent so we are just jotting down visualizations on a sticky note here in an hey, your hey, your share your application is still not come up okay sir can you can you reshare it is still saying share starting to share the content Anjal, can you uh, share your entire screen? You can unshare and share. That may be better. So uh, I am just trying to uh, share it. I'll just take one second.
Anchal, are you doing it? Okay, so what I'll do is maybe I'll go back to oh, my presentation and we'll bring Anchal again whenever she is ready. That is okay. Okay, I so what Anchal, we do is... Yeah. Sorry, sir, uh, sorry to disturb you, sir, but um, I think Anchal lost her co-host rights. So that's why she cannot share. She can. I think you can fix it. Meanwhile, I'll continue. Yes, sir, yes, okay. sir. Okay, so uh, as we said, uh, you collect information about this person or the uh, more than one person if it is a if it is another situation, and you do that. Now, when I gather a lot of information about this particular person and look at what did people say and uh, what is the observations which we gathered about this person, and again go back and look at the information which I showed, few things come up very strongly and some of the things which come very weakly. Just look at two things which are shown in light color. One which is called as, uh, she is an emotional and soft-spoken person, came from only one source. And uh, another thing which came from only one source or one uh, person is, she is a very fond of taking selfies. But there are three things which almost everybody who spoke about her uh, mentioned. One is about her coffee drinking experience. Second is her being very particular about cleanliness. And third is she is a very friendly, eco-friendly and environmental friendly person has been told by multiple people. So now I gathered a lot of information but out of this particular information, I see that there is some information which is more valuable to me because it has been reinforced by multiple people and multiple sources. I'll also give probably more important to that. And maybe if I make my gift based on these themes, which came very strongly, I know I have a gut feeling that I am likely to succeed uh, in this particular case, because these came very strongly. Uh, now, what does this point out? Uh, like this particular exercise of little research, empathizing and doing an empathy mapping and getting little clusters or patterns out of that uh, basically helps me to define my decision making or my problem more clearly. Now, what happened because of this entire exercise is this. You started with a gift for neighbor, okay, which was, uh, which is like a, which you have a solutions are in millions. You came up with a, a more crisper problem saying that what should be the gift for a neighbor who is an avid coffee drinker and particular about cleanliness and an environmental friendly person. So going from a, a understanding a problem and uh, empathizing what it leads to is defining the problem more clearly. And this particular step in design thinking, as it is mentioned here, is called as a define. First stage which we discussed is empathize to know more about the user, user environments, and other information. Whereas second step is based on that particular information, can I make my problem or my decision more crisper? Now I know if I take the second one as probably my problem rather than the first one, just a gift for any gift for neighbor, I am more likely to succeed in the second one rather than the first one, because this particular definition has come based on our earlier observations, research and data, which is an important. I'll again go back to you and say, now that problem has been redefined to you, 
what is your choice of gift for this person? Smartphone, plant, blue plants, watering, a plant, plant has come now, coffee mug is also a good, a cleaning machine, okay, good one. Then an advanced vacuum cleaner, vacuum cleaner, coffee maker, good one. Vacuum cleaner is this thing. Coffee mug, vacuum cleaner, okay. Coffee stick. Gardening tools, wonderful. Air purifier, this is even wonderful. Okay, so uh, I think it's a it's a very good set. I think uh, what I see that all of you already have an element of design thinking, just that you are not using it. Uh, so look at the three type of three times you gave a choice. Once when it is just a gift for a neighbor. Second time when you know when you knew little bit about the person, and the third when you knew some of. Uh, her strong likes or maybe even dislikes, uh, it gave you even a, a, a better option or a, a better thing about uh, what to do. Uh, do. Do you think that this approach actually gives a solution which is more likely to succeed? What do you feel? Well, you can type. Okay. Anybody has a no answer? I think almost everybody is saying yes. So that means probably you are convinced, which is uh, one of them. Uh, now, what I'll do is maybe at this stage, I can just pass for few minutes and take if you have any of you have any questions, uh, which is which I can probably take. Maybe you can put your questions in chat window. That may be a good one. There is one question asked. Uh, yeah, for you can from, read out. Yeah. Uh, so the person is asking uh, that, sir, if she is a avid coffee reader, won't she have already be having all the accessories devices required for it? So, so uh, we have still not decided the gift. These are all your choices, correct? When did we say? When did we decide on the gift? Only when we decide the gift we probably come to know whether she has or not. We haven't decided. These are all the ideas from you. We, in fact, decision making is still pending. These are a lot of choices which have come. Okay, so there is a second okay. question by Aman. Uh, he wants to um, ask, sir, what is the main difference between thinking on a problem and thinking on a solution? So, uh, uh, very good question. So, when you are actually thinking on a problem, you you actually uh, don't think or keep bring the solution at all. Okay. Uh, I'll probably give another example later after this particular uh, exercise. When we were actually, if I have to solve, let's say, uh, an air pollution problem in the city, I will not look at what are the probably uh, methods by which air pollution can be controlled in the first phase. In the first phase, I'll only know what are the reasons for air pollution. Okay. For example, I want to know, is it coming from construction dust? Is it coming from polluting air vehicles? 
is it coming because there is a stubble burning in the neighboring state? There can be a multiple reasons. So when I'm actually looking reasons for my air pollution, I am not thinking of any solution. Okay, so design thinking, I think your question also brings very important thing. It says, divide your problem into two aspects. One is study of the problem, and second is study of the solution. We haven't still started study of the solution. Only thing is I have been asking you to suggest this thing, but I haven't suggested any solution. We can take one more question, probably. So there is another question uh, by Deb Smitha. Uh, she wants to know, sir, would we use design thinking in everyday activities? If so, how will we, uh, how will we do in a systematic way? Um, I, uh, I do get a fair idea, but is this so important? So, so uh, you can do, and I think what happens is uh, how much time you want to spend on design thinking also depends on uh, how critical or how important is the problem or the you are trying to solve or the decision which you are going to make or the need which you are going to address. So, maybe uh, we'll also come to few examples after this where the design thinking has been applied. And you will see that in some cases, uh, you need to spend maybe weeks and months. Uh, the problem which we have taken is more of an example. Maybe if given an option, I would not like to spend so much time on this particular problem of deciding the gift. But then why did we take this particular example is to understand the concepts very clearly and something where every student can participate. If I say I want to take a problem of, let's say, an air pollution, I, I would have done, but then probably maybe some of the people who have studied a little bit about air pollution would have participated well. Those who haven't studied about air pollution may not have participated. We'll come to that, but uh, it can be applied to any problem which is there. And uh, we'll also come how much time to spend on such problems which are the ones which require very systematic uh, application and uh, which are the ones which probably sometimes you decide randomly also, not without, not much of research. So. Okay, so let me continue and probably I'll pass again uh, once more for questions. We can take up uh, a few more questions which would be there. Okay, so what, what we did is uh, we completed two stages and these two stages have nothing to do with solution. They are only with problem. At the end of these two stages, empathize and define, we only came up with a better formulation or better statement for a problem. Now we'll go to a solution. So how do you decide a solution? Design thinking also has a, a very interesting approach. It says often what happens is this is this is the way we are trained, particularly in schools, colleges, everywhere, that if there is a problem, think of one good solution. Or think of one solution, maybe good or not, but at least think of one solution. And most of them uh, basically come up with one solution as you did three times. Many of you, maybe some of you may have had more than one, but I think most of you wrote one solution, but design thinking says, don't explore, don't, don't explore only one solution. First, come up with as many possible solutions, which are possible, keeping this crisp design, the crisp problem statement in your mind. You can write down these are the possible solutions, and then you can also do an analysis with your solutions, to come up with a better solution, which probably uh, which you want to do. And, and that is where the design thinking comes in the second step, how to find a solution. Now, we see three things here. One is coffee drinking experience, second is cleanliness, and uh, another is environment friendly person. Uh, people have also come up 
and uh, some of the things which probably you wrote were these. Some people said uh, give coffee powder or a coffee beans. I saw, and uh, there may be some which most of you wrote. Uh, some of them you may not. For example, can I give coffee shop coupons to this person? Or there are also coffee mug warmers which keeps your coffee hot for longer time. Should that be uh, a good one? Or should I probably give just a T-shirt which has some coffee related themes? Or can I give coffee related books? And this list is, uh, this list can also go into probably uh, many more. These are just some representative uh, gifts which can be given, which probably people have pointed out and which people uh, generally, when we ask, people say these are possible solutions. Now, similarly, there can be uh, solutions which are related to eco friendliness of the, or the environmental, uh, you can say, friendly nature of this particular person. Can I give eco friendly tableware or flower pots? I think most of you have written. Can I give a solar mobile charger? Because solar is considered to be an environment friendly or t-shirt made of organic cotton, or should it be a mobile stand made of bamboo? Or is it organic foods? Or can I even give a tickets or a coupon to a wildlife sanctuary? Air purifier, I saw some of you mentioned, or should it be a home composter, or should it be jute slippers for home, uh, et cetera? So these are all good ideas. There is, there's virtually, you can actually pick uh, any of them and probably the probability that you will succeed or the person will like your idea is a very high because these have come through a, a research which is there. The third uh, set is more about the cleanliness. Maybe you want to give and some of you also mentioned automatic floor cleaner, uh, a diary for cleaning routines or a designer doormat or it could be a cleaning cart or a vacuum cleaner or even self-cleaning curtains, which are uh, available now in the market. Now, uh, these are all good ideas and uh, you know, uh, it's probably if you, you can pick one of them and do that. But design thinking days, there is even more to this. What is that more to this is, suppose, how do you get these ideas? One of the ways which people do is if you are working in a team, in this case, let's say this is your family, your family members would have listed this and you have written down all the ideas which all your family members gave and now you have to select one of them. Okay, that's, that's probably is one way to do. Or if you are working in, let's say, in industry, there is a team of 10 people who are trying to solve a problem. Maybe all of them can actually contribute to this. But design thinking says, don't just stop at these ideas. You can actually do better. And uh, it also says that these are not out of the box ideas. You can even do uh, a better than this if you follow certain techniques or certain tools which design thinking provides. Let me uh, show you two such techniques. There are many, but uh, I'll just show you one. One, it says there is a technique which is called 635 brain, weight, brain writing method. In this, you can actually get 108 ideas in 30 minutes. So that's a typical time uh, which people are given to come up. Now, how does this work? Let's say your family consists of six people and all of you write three ideas each, which is shown here. There are six people. And uh, there are three ideas, gift ideas, which people have written. Now, what each person does is takes the ideas written by others, either improves or modifies to make it better. So every time you make it better, you have a new idea or you improve it in some way. You think of how can I improve this person's idea? You, you will never reject anybody's idea. You will, you will not reject any of the ideas of others. You will only pick and do something, do a little thinking 
can i make this idea a little better and come up with a uh, a newer idea which is there so if six people uh with three ideas each one trying to improve the ideas of the others you will have 108 so first three ideas have to be written in 5 minutes and then you have 25 minutes to improve others ideas quickly and uh, you you have something like we are not saying 30 minutes is a very strict i'm just giving an example uh it could be half a day it could be one day depending on the complexity of the problem but in this case 30 minutes is a good time and uh, you have 108 ideas which can come in 30 minutes even though you started with just three your contribution is three but you ended up as a team with a, a many more ideas there is a second method which is called as a scamper which is also very widely used what it says that ideas which are like everybody has given three ideas or maybe more you take their ideas don't reject them can you think of in these ideas something which can be substituted or ideas can be combined to form a better idea or it can be modified to make it better or you eliminate certain things or you reverse certain thing in this idea so that you come up with a newer idea so scamper basically says that you have seven tools which you can apply on the ideas and then come up with uh, newer ideas uh, and then your ideas actually multiply in a short time and uh, you may end up with large number of ideas so when we for example the ideas which were mentioned by you people can also combine and maybe come up with uh, some of the ideas such as this okay for example a coffee mug made of eco friendly material it actually satisfies two very important characteristics of a person that the person is a coffee lover and also loves uh, eco friendly materials which is another aspect or a coffee flask which is easy to clean uh, or organic coffee beans how about self cleaning coffee mug now this is interesting there is a self cleaning curtain was mentioned by somebody and uh, self cleaning curtain was replaced with self cleaning mug but then somebody can ask does such a product really exist is there anything like a self cleaning coffee mug you may wonder that such a thing actually doesn't exist if it doesn't exist you have an opportunity to invent you will be the first person to invent if self cleaning coffee mug doesn't exist uh, then it becomes a completely your idea and this is how new inventions and new out of the box ideas can also be generated uh, when you sit as a team and use the collective power and use it in a very positive way without rejecting other ideas usually what happens in a brainstorming is everybody is very passionate about the idea they came up and they reject the others ideas but i think design thinking actually gives you very positive tools not to reject but to combine modify and use it in a manner where you actually come up like there are others for example notebook made of uh, made out of seeds so this actually somebody gifted me this uh, a year back so this is a notebook which is completely made out of seeds which you can write and once your book is over you can tear the papers which are made of a seed put it under the soil and the plant comes up very interesting idea which probably uh, somebody came up maybe through one such route and there can be many others for example these are very random ideas which are mentioned here which probably can come up as we said uh, this process also leads to ideas which nobody ever thought of that's that's a very good part so there there is a a big opportunity for me to uh, say hey this is my unique idea and i am the first one in the world to come up with this idea which no one actually came up and then it becomes a innovation or a invention if you take it ahead and make it let's say a product and so design thinking says ki don't just stop writing the ideas whichever comes to your mind 
but take those ideas combine them and brainstorm them use them in a very uh, in a collective way to come up with very radical ideas which no one ever thought of uh, could be some of them now let's say you do this and you come up with maybe 100 ideas now that's a so this particular aspect of the coming up with multiple ideas is called as a ideate in design thinking so this is a third step so ideate comes under the solution first two steps empathize and define was related to problem only now we our first step in solution finding is to come up with as many solutions as possible and use methods to come up with as many creative solutions as possible so that is a that is a, a very uh, important step which you see here now if i have too many ideas how do i select one because this is another headache that i came up with large number of them now i don't know how do i actually come up in fact some of your ideas can be implemented some of them cannot be i'll also tell you why so what is the next step which is done in design thinking is we apply filters filters means i look at these solutions and i look at what are the ideas which people came are feasible and many other such filters let me show you some of the filters which will say suppose i come up with like we were discussing about self cleaning coffee mug i know that it's not possible to make it in a week it's a completely a new idea if it is a if somebody has come for the first if it is available in the market it's wonderful i can still go for it but i think if it is not then i know that it cannot be made in one or there are some very radical ideas which can be bought but one week is a very less time people won't be able to deliver in one week uh, hence i reject out of those 100 ideas those which cannot be made available within a week so it reduces the number of ideas now i have to uh, available to me does it fit in my budget what is the budget you thought of somebody may say i want to spend 300 rupees on giving a gift another person can say no my budget is about 1200 rupees okay now some of you said coffee makers and uh, vacuum cleaners you know those are not possible in 300 rupees and few hundred rupees and you need to spend much more and if you know what is your budget which you are actually planning many of them others get eliminated and you you have now even a smaller list out of that 100 maybe that 100 has now reduced to 60 because some of them went because of these filters you also want to probably look at a choice as is it available in dark colors not a very strong but you found during your empathy phase that this person actually likes dark colors you would probably prefer if not be very rigid about it maybe if you want to eliminate uh, this thing you can also think of that is this already available with the person this somebody mentioned during question answer session so if i have any information which is which is not always possible to know suppose by any chance if i know that this person already has uh, i may or may not give why did i say may or may not for example if it is a coffee coffee mug it is not necessary that if you have one coffee mug second cannot be owned maybe one requires more than one mug uh, for a daily use if you say that there is already if you are actually looking at let's say a self clean uh, let's say this is something which is a, a vacuum cleaning or a floor cleaning robo or floor cleaning Uh, mission with somebody mentioned if you know that they have probably you don't want to give another floor cleaning mission to them uh, because that probably may or may not serve a purpose so you have to apply these filters and you have to come up with as many filters as possible some of these filters also come through that initial research of knowing the person uh, which is which is that's why that research is very important maybe i end up with a probably a this thing which there are 30 more ideas out of which 15 
do not have any wow factor. I drop those ideas. Maybe you also want to look at, am I giving a gift which is very difficult to use and maintain? Or maybe I'm giving a gift which is not safe. Is it pet friendly? Maybe this is very specific to this person because this person owns a pet and a pet lover. So you would also like to use some, some filters which are very specific to a situation. I can, I can write down a few more based on whatever. And when I apply these filters, if I have 100 ideas which are written down, they come to a very small number, which is that sometimes only one, sometimes a couple, sometimes a few, sometimes even none. If, if you say uh, none of them meet all these things, you would like to relax one of them. I, I'll probably relax the dark colors and say that, okay, if I release the dark color filter, probably two of them qualify. Maybe I would like to look at that. So then you play with these filters. Usually what happens is if you have enough ideas, you'll always have few which will go through most of the filters and that becomes a solution which is there. So uh, this way, if, if I'm actually able, to, now all the solutions which you gave, I want you to do one more thing. Just tell me whether it goes through filters such as this or not. You can say yes or no. If it goes through all the filters, write yes. If it doesn't go through, then you write no. Okay, quite a few. Okay, at least one. Okay. Okay, some of you have written no, and some of you have written yes. So, uh, so that means ki, the people who have written yes, they are able to identify at least one or two solutions where uh, uh, it is going through all of them. So that means you have found a, a gift or set of possibilities, which you know that since it came through understanding the person and went through all the reasons because of which the solution may fail has been eliminated through these filters, you know that this is going to very likely that this is going to work. And applying these filters and ensuring that your solution actually works is also called as a step, which is called as a validate uh, in the design thinking aspect. So we introduce you to four steps, empathize, define, ideate, and validate. Could be a good uh, beginning for many of you to start looking at problems and follow this particular uh, approach. So before I proceed, uh, what I'll do is I'll, we can take maybe two, three more questions and then we can go ahead. We'll take few questions from the YouTube live. Uh, okay. So there, uh, somebody wants to know, sir, can you re-explain the empathy process once again? Okay. So uh, empathy process is uh, actually introduced in a, a very simple manner here. It basically says, if I am designing or if I am solving a problem or if I am actually addressing some need uh, for certain people community. Uh, do I understand this people, my end users uh, and the stakeholders very well, which is there. Let's say if, uh, if I am actually coming up with a new medical device and this medical device has to be used in hospitals. Do I, do I know enough about the patients who are going to use this device? Do I understand them well? Do I know the doctors who are actually going to prescribe or use this particular one? Do I know the nurses and other staff who would be handling this particular medical device? So understanding all these people, patients, nurses, doctors, hospital administrators, who are all very important for a medical device and uh, 
knowing their perspective on the problem would be very important before I come up with a solution. So in this case, this is a very simple, there is only one person, but uh, in a more complex like medical device, you not only have the users who are patients, but there are also many other people who are involved. And uh, everybody's perspective would be very important. And if I have those perspective, I can come up with a better design. Thank you, sir. The second question is from Charan. Uh, he wants to know what is the use of empathy maps? Okay, so uh, I think uh, probably since we didn't have a demo, we'll have that soon. Uh, you'll get a real value of empathy map where uh, uh, it also helps you. For example, let's say I am actually trying to uh, design, let's say a, a coffee shop would like to probably launch a new coffee mug. Uh, as I said, there may be tens of thousands of people who may be potential users. You can't interview all of them, you probably are, you can't interact, you can't get information from all of them. You may probably do with some, but the data also helps you. Basically the empathy mapping is a tool first is to how to gather this information, how to organize and how to draw certain insights and patterns from this information can all be done uh, as a part of this particular one. I think uh, maybe after, uh, few minutes we we will have a demo so you can again right so i think at this point we can benefit from a demo so i'll try once again okay so uh if you want to go for a demo please do it yes sir Um, is my screen visible now? Yeah, it's a white screen. Okay. Okay. This screen yeah. is also visible? It's visible now. Persona is visible. Maybe you can actually. You can also okay. introduce what is persona. Right, right, sir. Yes. So, uh, hello again, this time for real. So, as Professor Rao has uh, very well mentioned, and we had an interactive session about a persona that has just come to your neighborhood. So if we try to visualize it here, some of you are asking the importance of such empathy maps or persona. So this is basically a collaborative team software and this is one of them that is Miro. And here you see that when you visualize these in the form of sticky notes, like here all the points that Professor Rao had mentioned in the slides are covered in the form of sticky notes. And if I can give you a live demo. So for example, I also want to add here that uh, Zara lives with two spouses, a kid and father-in-law, and the age is around 42 years. And probably she's stayed in the city for about 15 years. So if you can see, it's so easy to uh, apply sticky notes and it's also collaborative. That means that multiple team members can actually in real time add on to the sticky notes. And now if you see that there are personality traits, interests that you can write, as Professor Rao had mentioned that the person Zara uh, is fond of taking selfies and is an avid coffee drinker. So you can also add images, make it more illustrative and understandable here. And then also some other traits like tech savvy, etc. Now, as after this, what happens if we create, if we want to uh, then create an empathy map, all these templates are available here under the template screen. Am I still connected? Yes, yes, good. Okay. So if you go here, 
uh, you can probably see a detailed tutorial about it, but just for an example, I'll show you that here you have all sorts of templates for brainstorming and ideation for all the different stages of design thinking, as Professor Rao had mentioned. Brain writing, scamper, all of these you will find here. So I've just illustrated one of these uh, in the empathy maps with the example that Professor Rao had taken. So for example, this is a persona. Now, uh, Professor Rao talked about what uh, information or data points you jot down. So if you see the first quadrant is think and feel. On the left, it is what do you hear. On the bottom, it is what the person sees and does, and then what you see. So it is not only about what that person is telling you that you jot down on this empathy map, but also your observations. And then you also jot down on the left, what are the pain points of that person and what are the positives about that person. After this step, what you basically have is that you start to draw certain connections. Like this is a whole base of data and information that you collect from that persona. But now when you have to actually move forward uh, to refine the solutions or to understand about the basic needs, you start to connect different things. Like, uh, for example, this is something that you think is very relevant for you that coffee and health, for example, this you think is relevant. So you highlight it in your empathy map. You can try all sorts of uh, customization in terms of color or fonts. Then probably if you say that uh, she does not like waiting too long, this might be insightful for when you want to design certain experiences for the person. And then you say that uh, uh, Zara, feels that if something tastes great, then it makes her feel very happy. So that is something you might want to incorporate in your uh, solution or the idea that you are going to think about. So that is why an, a visualization that is integrated in the form of empathy map is important for you. And if I can just share another uh, example in the lines of what Professor Rao has just mentioned, Uh, so you see, when you start to apply filters, this is how you can create in uh, the software where you can actually write uh, how a certain thing is difficult or easy or how it is very innovative or less innovative. Like Professor Rao was talking about different factors, like is this does it have a wow factor or would it be easy to use or difficult to use? So it is from a different example. But you can see how you can then arrange these kinds of sticky notes to very quickly arrive at a very consolidated and shorter, crisp, more focused idea base. So uh, this is what I wanted to share. If there are any questions regarding this, I would answer now. I think I think we'll come back to okay. that maybe questions later. Okay. So uh, I think what. Uh, uh, can you I think let me share? Oh, yes, sir. Stop sharing this. Okay, so the software which uh, actually uh, Anchal demonstrated is called as uh, Miro. Uh, and uh, Google also has, for example, you can use some of the Google tools for design thinking. Uh, as a uh, as a part of uh, this one, and many of them are actually free. Some of them are priced. Uh, some of them are free for a limited time with limited users. So uh, there are variety of such tools uh, which can be used. For example, it's 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 not only about organization, but I think when when you can visualize when you have a huge amount of data, and if I have a tool which can help me to visualize many things simultaneously, then a lot of new insights which can be drawn and hence the importance of these tools becomes really uh, uh, an important one. Okay, any any questions like I think uh, 
uh, Kanika was taking a question. Can we take one more question before we go? Yes, sir. So there's another question by Muhammad Shahzad. Sir, how uh, it is possible to eliminate ideas without actually rejecting them? Can you repeat how to eliminate the ideas? Sir? Yes. Uh, so uh, is it possible to, uh, so he wants to ask, so how is it possible to eliminate ideas without actually rejecting them? Yeah. So in other words, uh, what you are saying is ki, uh, if you are rejecting a particular idea, that means there is a reason for that. And if that reason comes in a very transparent way, nobody would actually object to rejecting that particular uh, idea. So usually it happens. Uh, I think your question also comes particularly when many people sit. Uh, you know that this idea is not going to work, but your colleague is not convinced, which is there. Now, what happens is key, even if by even if you want to retain that particular idea, you will see that when we apply the filters at the time of applying the filters, this will not go through one or two or more filters. Anyhow, it gets rejected. So sometimes you would like to retain and don't want to reject, but at the time of applying your filters, anyhow, you need to do that. Thank you, sir. There's another question by Zeni uh, from YouTube Live. Are the processes or steps to be followed in a linear way? Okay, very, very good question. So usually this particular process is not a linear one. You you follow this particular process, but sometimes you may have to go back. For example, when you actually sit for defining a problem, you realize that you don't have much information about this person at all. You only have two or three things which you know, and you would probably like to know more. You would probably like to go back to the empathize phase again and probably do more, uh, more research before uh, uh, you come back to the second phase. So this is this is a stage where you also do a lot of back and forth. And this is a this is not a linear process. It's an iterative process. You go from third step to second, second to first. It does happen, which is there. If your research is very good, these iterations would be very less. Thank you, sir. There's another question from Akash. He wants to know that is it necessary that the idea should always be cost effective? Good, good question. So what generally happens is uh, the cost effectiveness usually is determined based on what we call as a value for money. So when you have an idea, Sometimes people won't mind spending if the value this particular product or a solution which it brings is enormous. Just to give an example, for many of the people in India, mobile phone is the most costly thing which they would have ever bought. And uh, that they would have bought based on few months of their savings or maybe an year long saving. Now, why do they buy such an expensive device, which is like a year long saving, is the value it brings in their lives is enormous. There may be, they, if there is another product which costs the same thing, they will not go for that because it, it doesn't bring the same value for this thing. So usually value is at the numerator, money is at the denominator. Okay, so ultimately what matters is the value for money. Thank you, sir. There's another question from our YouTube live. Um, where Sindhu wants to know, sir, when there is a pile of ideas, designers use software or pen and paper method to eliminate it? Both. So uh, there is there is uh, there is no hard and fast whether somebody would use physical or a digital methods. 
in many of the uh, big companies, people use the whiteboard and uh, maybe uh, many of the people physically gather, use sticky notes physically to do that. And uh, it can also be done digitally. So there, so there is there is no specific this thing, uh, whether digital or physical, both are equally used options. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, there's okay. another question by Mohana Priyam uh, from a YouTube yeah. live. Uh, so, what can we do if we are not having any information about the person to whom we are gifting? And also, there is not enough time. So, so then you are actually taking a risk. The risk is that uh, there is a, the probability that your gift will be liked by the person is very low if you can do it. It can be done. It, it doesn't mean it is there. Sometimes person may also say that they liked because they don't want to displease you. But uh, ultimately, whether it actually makes, uh, whether they really like uh, is a slightly a different issue. And uh, if you do a design thinking process, probably it's also possible to come up with a gift which they not only like, but they remember for the rest of their life. Thank you, sir. There's another question from Shruti from the YouTube live. Uh, she wants to ask, what new skill can we get if we follow design thinking process? What new? Skills can we get if we follow design uh, thinking process? Oh, uh, actually, a very good question. So if you, if you actually look at the design thinking, the way steps are involved, uh, you can just even use any of them in bits and pieces also. Okay, for example, uh, I may use design thinking, maybe step three and step four. Uh, I've not defined the problem very well, but I would still like to do ideate and uh, validate. It will still add some value. So good thing about this, there is no risk in using either fully or in terms of this. People have applied to many things. Uh, most recent uh, trend is people are applying design thing to decide what is the best career option for them. So it can be as uh, interesting problems as that. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think I can see Harshita from the WebEx meeting. Uh, her, her hand is raised. Maybe she wants to ask. So she can unmute uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Hashita, is it possible for you to unmute yourself and ask? Okay. Maybe she can type the question and we can take it up later. We will actually proceed. Okay, sir. Okay, so let me uh, summarize uh, uh, in a way what the design thinking uh, we studied. So usually, if you really look at the process which we used, is sometimes called as a double diamond process. Now, what do we, what do I mean by double diamond? Is that if you see here, there are two diamonds. Uh, there is a converging phase and then there is a diverging phase. First, you have a diverging phase and then converging. Similarly, second for this thing. If you look at the first diamond and first half, is a diverging phase where you are trying to gather as much information as possible about the user without restricting any source, etc. So, whatever information comes, you are open to that. And uh, that is the first diverging phase which is called as an understand here. This is another way to put it. Once I have enough information, I sit, analyze, explore, and then probably uh, synthesize the information to define my problem very crisply, which is the center circle. So this is basically you have converged 
to a more specific problem is the first convergence of the first diamond. So first diamond refers to the problem. Second diamond refers to the solution. So in the second diamond, you had a diverging phase. What is the diverging phase? Come up with as many solutions as possible. Don't restrict to one, two, or a single solution. And coming up with these solutions is a diverging phase. Then applying a filters and identifying one is again a, a converging phase. So a, a decision making which goes through a diverging converging phases, both for problem and the solution, is very likely to succeed. That is uh, that is that is the hypothesis of uh, a, a typical design thinking. Double diamond process is used extensively in Europe. In Europe, it is uh, routinely called as a double diamond process, and uh, this process is very similar to uh, what we discussed as a design thinking process. Now, what are the cases where design thinking can be applied? That may be a good because it also came as a discussion. Can I, we, we tried it for a very simple problem. If you ask uh, me, maybe I can't spend a day to decide what is the gift because that's too much of a time to decide a gift. But if I spend, there is no harm. I may come up with a gift, which as I said, people may remember for their lifetime, but uh, it's a choice which you have to make. But as you go to the more serious problems, the time which you need to spend also increases and it, it's very important. For example, we solved a problem which is more of a domestic in nature. You can solve a community problem. Your colony is probably not very clean and uh, your colony needs to address a lot of cleanliness issues. Can you come together as a team, make a team and go through the same process? The same process is identify what are all the problems which colony is facing and uh, why is it happening? Uh, maybe you'd like to talk to some of the households and get this particular information, do empathize face and come up with one, two or three things which you want to improve, which is your defined phase. And once I have defined, then for these two or three things which I want to improve in the colony, these are the various solutions. And then again, discuss with households because you can't decide a solution for all the houses unless they, don't, they agree to implement. So you need to make them as a stakeholder. When you validate your solution, you have to be sure that the people in the colony are ready to accept this as a solution. And uh, that is where the filter uh, comes and you do that. So this method can be applied to uh, any of these. You can solve a city's problem, like as we discussed about an air pollution. You can actually uh, solve a problem of the country. Right now, the country is facing a very serious problem that there are crores of students uh, who, are who have some kind of a disability, either visual disability or hearing, or it could be locomotor disability. They are on wheelchairs. So uh, they have a serious problem in uh, getting educated like any normal student. Now, I want to solve this as a, a problem and we do apply in IIT Delhi design thinking to such problems very often uh, to look at. And if, when, when we do such problem, we not only do it, we also involve four or five other ministries which are involved in this particular aspect and uh, they are also part of this problem solving. You can solve a global problem. For example, road traffic injuries is a, a big problem all over the world. And how do I address, uh, if I want to know what are the reasons uh, because of which road traffic injuries happen, and I would like to have a, a visual map of all these problems, etc. it's possible. Or I want to solve another global problem 
which is like fall of elderly people almost all over the world elderly people have serious falls while walking and uh, when this happens many of them actually break their hips once the hip is broken many of them are bedridden and once they are bedridden then their longevity actually comes down drastically so it is also seen that the people who are bedridden because of hip injuries most of them actually die uh, within a year of the injury so these are very serious problem and still unaddressed so there could be uh, many ways design thinking and uh, design thinking has also been applied to a problem which is beyond the planet earth so one of the uh, interesting problem which design thinking uh, has been used is our space has lot of debris like lot of satellites have been launched some of them are not functional but they are still orbiting uh, the planet and this is creating a lot of junk uh, around the earth how do you clear this particular junk how to solve this debris in the space because this is creating a problem for launching of new vehicles uh, because of the collisions and others it may even fail so this is a problem which does not belong to planet but still has been people are using design thinking to solve such a problem so starting from a very small domestic problem of giving having a good gifting experience to something where how do you clear the debris in space uh, it has been tried almost uh, in almost all aspects uh, which is which covers a wide range of them okay uh, let me give uh, one more example quickly uh, which is not a, as simple as uh, as the one which we have discussed uh, but uh, i'll i'll quickly give you a little bit more information about fall of elderly people which has uh, which is a very serious problem now what happens is ki the number of elderly people is very large uh, it's not one like the example which we took because you are solving a, a gift you are giving a gift to one person it becomes a very easy but uh, when there is a large number of people you want to understand uh, how what is this problem how big is this problem who are the people who go through uh, this problem and uh, i would like to do the empathize phase and collect lot of data from the elderly people and uh, then we can do it. so usually what happens is when you have a large number of people who are beneficiaries of your solution you can only talk to or interact with few of them and out of which you would like to make two or three people who are very typical uh whom we call as a personas personas are the representatives they represent the larger population in some way or the other in other words if i have let's say four personas these four personas would represent most of the problems which is faced by the elderly if i am solving for these four i am actually kind of taking care for most of them and identifying such people also comes through empathy mapping for example uh, when the fall for elderly being solved uh, people came up with uh, two personas who actually represent typically the people who are uh, very prone to fall who are those this is one person who is called as raghav das 74 year old male retired government employee lives in a single bedroom apartment loves independent uh, does not employ any servant owns a rupees 15000 smartphone and uh, drives his wagon or uh, occasionally learns new things and tries new gadgets during free time watches sports and tv and connects with retired colleagues through internet critical of government and its policies now if you see here the information which is gathered is not just about the fall 
it's about the entire personality and each of them is very important if you know that this person owns 15000 rupees smartphone it also gives an indication when you are defining a problem or a solution what is the amount this person will be able to spend if i actually price it this way that's an important aspect so so every every aspect of a person and their characteristic helps to come up with a problem uh, very clearly or to come up with the right solution but he is not the only person you may have another persona who is very different from this and you need to probably find a solution which fits for both of them so the second person who is a persona in this case is amina sheik so amina is a 65 65 year old widow who is dependent and lives with her son daughter in law and two grandchildren very simple religious and uh, does not change her habits easily and uh, she does not own any cell phone during free time she plays with grandchildren or chats with neighbors she is diabetic for last 20 years loves sweets but avoids eating due to restrictions imposed by the family her only unfulfilled wish in life is to go on hajj now this is a very important this thing that if you are coming up with a solution it should work for variety of people and here is another typical uh, amina sheik which is there now everything tells for example if looks like she is a person who does not make independent decisions she is largely dependent on the family in case if i have a solution that solution will not be bought by her but very likely that the family has to buy her this particular product or a solution so she is not an independent decision maker uh, that is the indication which i get when i read this particular persona and uh, that's also important if if i do it for her and if pay, if the family is not willing to buy this particular product or solution still it's a failure so i am actually now giving the more complex aspects of a design thinking for more complex problems but uh, they can all be tackled uh, very use, easily using the same tools uh, which we discussed so as i said this fall is a very common now uh, you want to probably if you want to take a much bigger problem you would like to call it as how to reduce fall risks in elderly which is like a too big a problem to solve for anyone i would like to do a research and come up with more crisper problem to solve so i can do some research when i do a research on this particular problem what are the kind of information which i want to gather is how big is this problem how many people suffer all over the world and how is the demography of the people and what is the age groups in which falls are very high and what are the reasons for fall and uh, what are the situations where the fall is very high is it probably more in the bathrooms or is it while walking or while getting up when you are actually getting up from the bed there could be a multiple reasons which you want to look at what are the surfaces where the fall occurs more and what time of the day most falls occur and are there any additional health conditions which trigger this fall many of the elderly people do have other disease burden and uh, for example somebody may be having a parkinson's and uh, that that probably can also aggravate the fall and uh, what do people do to avoid fall risk okay do they use a cane do they use something else and uh, i can go on the kind of questions which one should research before sitting for a solution we have not come up with a solution we are still doing a research what is the role of cane in preventing the fall who helps them when fall occurs how do they communicate others if they are living alone about their fall and how are the falls detected and uh, how much time does it take 
to get the help when fall occurs. This is important. If you can get a help within an hour, many of the problems can be solved, which is which is which is a which is an important uh, aspect. And this also gives me I, I, I am just throwing some few questions, just like we had a questions related to the uh, gifting experience. Do most elderly, uh, most of the elderly who fall live alone or they live with their families? Are they financially, socially independent? What percentage of them? And uh, this is also very important. Many times behavioral aspects are very important. You want to solve a problem for elderly, but elderly people don't consider that as a problem for themselves. Now, this is this is a, 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 a very different and unless people think that this is a problem, they are also not going to buy your solution. So understanding this aspect is uh, another important. So I'm just showing you a few questions which comes at the empathize stage. How is this problem being addressed currently? What are the current solutions? What are the products and solutions available in market? What are the, why are the existing solutions not working? Though there are a lot of products and solutions, people still are falling in uh, millions and probably uh, there are deaths in thousands. So why is this problem still persists? Is there enough awareness among people about existing solutions? And I can go on uh, for a few pages. Now, doing a research for such a problem would require a few weeks or a month before you understand the problem very correctly. Understand the people and understand this thing. It may also require you to spend maybe a day or two with elderly to observe them, know them, their activities of daily living, uh, all that is important. It's not just a uh, collection of an information from one source to there. And how do you collect these sources of information is, we generally say primary. That means you immerse. Immerse means be with the elderly for some time to know. Shadow them. You be with the elderly person wherever they go to observe. Role play. Can you become elderly temporarily uh, to feel the same problem and this has also been done people have actually uh, kind of uh, hardened their joints uh, through bandage to see that i walk like an elderly to feel the same problem you do interviews you do consultation with experts then uh, there is a lot of secondary research there is already information available in abundance on the internet research papers reports there are patents which are filed on solutions and there are already products existing in the market. You'd like to look at entire picture uh, as a part of your empathize before you define your problem. And then you define your problem and the problem definition can take multiple ways. So reducing the fall risks is a too big a problem. I want to just concentrate on preventing the falls. I don't care about uh, what happens after the fall. My solution which I am going to provide is probably just how do you prevent the falls? Or another uh, group may think that I, I'll only reduce the probability of a fail. There could be another way of defining the same problem is Falls cannot be prevented. Can the injuries be reduced when the fall happens? Could be another way of looking at. And uh, some people would like to just only devise solutions for detecting the falls, which is that fall has happened. Now, when you do an empathize phase and go through all these things, the way we were able to come up with very crisp problem, uh, where you are only looking at three aspects personality traits of the person to decide the gift. Same thing happens here. You will come up with a more crisp problem and uh, which you can actually attempt. And you can also 
say uh, you are what we call as a inclusion exclusion should i include false from bet no that's a very different phase i am not going to include how about false from stair that requires a very different solution i am not going to touch false happening outdoor or only indoor maybe i would like to look at only indoor and how about false which happen in bathroom or toilet i would certainly like to include because that's a very high probability so you can also think of what to include in your problem and what you don't want to include so it is like what we call as a scoping of the problem and uh, you scope the problem for which you are actually trying to do kind of a thing for example you don't want to include outdoors or states where the reasons for fall could be very different than the walking kind of thing. okay so what you have seen is key in problems which are uh, little more complex you need to spend time and uh, maybe a team has to work may not be sometimes individual to collect enough data and you have to work as a team to define your problem uh, which often ha happens in most of the industries and corporations if you are if you already have a little experience of design thinking then you are also a valued employee because you are ready to probably participate in teams and team works if the company is uses the design thinking as a tool in all their endeavors let me keep a eye on the time okay any questions let's say I'll... yes sir there are few questions uh vaishnavi okay. and pratik want to know what are the pros and cons of design thinking Pro, pros and cons means ki if you use the design thinking you are benefited if you don't use you may not be uh, benefited by the value it brings in but that there is there are there are there are no negative aspects of uh design thinking it it's not in other ways suppose uh, i use a design thinking and still i come up with a wrong solution uh is very unlikely thank you sir this another question by akansha she is saying uh there can be chances where the end result is not likable like end result of design thinking is not likable what are your views on okay, that okay good 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 question so the moment you say likable uh or not likable that immediately tells did you do what when you did the research stage empathize stage did you found enough about the people for whom you are designing about their likes and dislikes if you had a good control or if you had a good knowledge about likes and dislike then this question should not happen ideally but it it still can happen because uh, if you actually look at the design thinking design thinking is also a probabilistic method you are actually uh, interviewing or trying to get the data from some limited source and trying to apply for a larger it can still fail and it fails and uh, failures are uh, very much respected in uh, uh, design thinking in fact it says uh, design thinking actually we have not gone to the next stage which is like prototyping and testing it says first version of the product may still fail but you can go back and use your uh, data and the knowledge which you have gathered to quickly come up with a, a second version and you can succeed so failures are not treated as a negative in design thinking failures are treated as a valuable experiences to quickly try out a new solution which is likely to Thank you, sir. Uh, this is another question by Saurabh. Uh, can design thinking be used for students in their studies also? It can be. Malab, uh, you need to formulate it properly. And uh, usually, what happens is when you apply uh, design thinking on yourself, uh, the challenge is how do you keep your own biases away from decision making, which is there. 
so usually what happens is ki when when we don't use the design thinking we come up with a highly biased solutions and uh, keeping that bias for applying to self is a challenge but it can be done thank you sir there is another question by kunal thakur he wants to ask what is the meaning of put to others use in scamper method okay so so what it says is ki for example uh, you saw one of the solutions which says ki uh, solar mobile charger okay now what happens is i'll probably use the solar version of that okay and instead of charging a mobile i'll say solar lighting through leds which is also considered to be environment friendly because leds are supposed to consume less power and others so you actually wrote down led mobile charges but ultimately you end up with a solution where your uh, solar is used for something else so it's it's putting it to completely a different use thank you sir this another question by harshit choudhury uh he saying if we have a larger audience or consumer then we have to gener generalize the product a bit more at which point can we differentiate between common sense and design thinking yeah so uh you can it's it's a it's a very important question and uh, usually what happens is uh, the moment you are saying ki it is a common sense you uh you are saying ki you don't have enough data or you don't want to rely on enough data which is collected uh, which is there if you have collected enough data and uh, if that actually uh, and you are very confident about the process of collecting data and the reliability of the data and information then uh, there should not be a problem the problem only comes when you do that as a we then you probably have to use common sense because you don't have enough uh, data to substantiate your decisions thank you sir uh, i think what i have noted uh, noticed is lot of que questions are coming again and again around time constraints so i think if you can explain again uh, what people are feeling is like design thinking takes much more time so if they again and again it, ask it, that whether we are constrained it, on time what how can we go about it it does so 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 generally what happens is maybe as i said for gifting experience design thinking is a purely an optional tool i may use or i i don't use it's it's not a a big problem but suppose let's say uh a company has to launch a new product and then there are already 50 such products in the market and i want to still come up with a new product which will which will still have larger sales and larger acceptance by the people then it becomes almost mandatory to use such tools which is there so it's a it's a it's a situation where you want to probably decide as i said the example which we have taken is purely more from the convenience point of view but uh, but it's a good example to start with uh, it is generally seen that there are a lot of case studies and literature the companies which have followed design thinking and those who did not it also becomes a, a question of a sustainability in the sense if i am actually producing certain products and solutions i have to continuously innovate in order to uh, basically stay in the market and capture the larger share of a market so in those situations you need to continuously innovate and design thinking actually helps you to do that so there are situations where it becomes almost a mandatory there are situations where it is almost not necessary and that decision has to be thank you sir i think i see uh, harshit choudhury raising his hand so if i would request him to unmute and ask the question yeah 
Thank you, ma'am. Uh, yeah. So, I have a question about uh, what are the more technical or should I say mechanical uses of design thinking, if there are any? Because uh, as per your PPT, I think they are the most human centered process of thinking. Yeah, so uh, it is it is extensively used in technical also. For example, let's say uh, I want to design a mission for floor cleaning, as one of you mentioned, is a possible solution. Suppose that is a problem which I take, I may come up with 10 different designs of floor cleaners. Okay. Now, if I, if I come up with 10 different designs, how do I select the one which I am actually going to test and probably produce? Because I cannot test all 10 of them. So, I go through the same process. I have 10 mechanical designs or electromechanical designs and uh, they go through the same filter which is feasible which has more financially viable and uh, which is more desirable by the users so i apply those filters and again take it so whether it's a product which is highly uh, technical or a engineering oriented or human centered it has been used for both Thank you, sir. I think there is last question that we can take up. Uh, so, few people want to know um, that if we uh, if we imply design thinking, is there a professional benefit or is there a career uh, you know choice that we can have uh, that they can seek through design thinking process? Yeah. So, as as you as you make uh, as you progress in your careers, you are likely to face with uh, solving problems which are more complex than the present one. So as the complexity increase, increases, purely uh, as somebody mentioned, uh, common sense will not work because the kind of uh, uh, issues, filters, the knowledge which one has to handle is too big. And often you work in teams more in a collaborative mode. So in those situations, it becomes a, a very important aspect. And uh, if you if you know these techniques, you can very easily apply. Or if you have done few design thinking exercises, you have some prior experience and edge over others. So there's one more question. Would you like to take it, or the time would? Yeah, come? yeah, yeah. No, last question we can take. Okay. So there's this question is from our YouTube live. Mohana Priya wants to know, sir, how can we reduce global warming through scamper method? Scamper. Okay. So so uh, you are actually starting from somewhere in the middle. But the global warming is uh, is uh, is uh, very important. And if you just search design thinking and global warming, you will see a lot of literature, a lot of paper, a uh, lot of uh, workshops which are uh, being held. So, it's possible. Now, uh, only thing is ki what exact solutions which people come through, scamper, etc. It's very difficult to guess sitting here <laughs> because we, we don't have that data and that knowledge and what are the initial solutions and how will they be modified. If if we are a part of, let's say, a team which is trying to solve, we know that this will definitely help. And even if you, I would say just search global warming and scamper, you may still get some of the literature. Okay, I think probably we have, we are there at close to the time and maybe uh, design thinking can continue. Uh, but I think we'll stop it here, respecting the time. So somebody is asking, how do you reduce the space debris? That's another project.
Okay, can we, Jay? Jay is there? Uh, yes, Professor Also, thank you so much for your time. And thank you, uh, students uh, on YouTube and and who, who are here with us for this session. And uh, uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll join you uh, the next time and we will share that information with you shortly. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you.